Hello, <coughs> welcome back. Um, uh, so um, we need to uh, <coughs> move on to <coughs> a new topic. Um, <coughs> I mean, this is the same topic. Uh, this is one of the uh, sections in the uh, same topic of uh, bond portfolio management. And um, we uh, basically discussed, you know, um, uh, not just basically, we discussed in depth with, you know, a lot of depth, uh, the um, the question of, you know, a question about durations, you know, how we calculate it and how we uh, use it to uh, predict the uh, bond price changes and what are also, you know, we discussed what are the determinants of duration. Now, <clears throat> so we're now moving on to uh, immunization, right? Um, so just like, you know, uh, uh, immunizing against some, you know, uh, uh, disease by taking uh, a vaccine shot uh, by, you know, um, uh, Immunization here, you know, uh, uh, in this context means uh, immunizing uh, your bond holdings against interest rate fluctuations. Okay, so, um, uh, but, you know, there is nothing you can do about interest rate fluctuations because this systemic is coming from the macroeconomic system. But what you can do is, you know, you can... Uh, match the, uh, uh, you can use duration, right? You can match the, uh, uh, to, you know, um, uh, protect, uh, you know, um, to avoid, you know, um, um, mismatch between the, uh, your obligation and uh, your assets, right? Um, that's, to put it into a, like a single paragraph, it's like that. <clears throat> It's not, you know, uh, that uh, simple concept, but, you know, I would try to uh, boil it down to uh, as simplest, you know, uh, form as possible. But let's take a uh, look at this example because, you know, nothing helps the uh, uh, a good comprehension like um, uh, going over actual example. So immunization is a strategy to shield net worth from... Uh, Yield fluctuations, and as I said, uh, yield in this case means an you know, interest rate. Now, <clears throat> and of course, the the uh, average you know uh, yield from the uh, uh, the same uh, bond class would also be affected by general fluctuation in the uh, uh, overall interest rate in the market, right? Now. <clears throat> So uh, that strategy is to uh, to shield net worth from interest rate fluctuation is by matching the duration of assets and liabilities, assets and liabilities. Okay. So um, uh, for a uh, horizon that's equal to portfolio's time horizon, right? Invest investment horizon that is equal to portfolio's uh, duration, price risk and reinvestment risk are precisely offsetting. Okay, now <clears throat> let's think about it. Uh, price risk means the uh, interest rate risk, and usually the interest rate risk is a problem when the interest rate just shoots up, right? When interest rate uh, goes up unexpectedly. But on the other hand, you know, the reinvestment rate risk is the case where, you know, um, uh, usually when interest rate goes down. Why? Because your <clears throat> cash flows from coupon payments are worth less when interest rate goes down. But again, uh, when interest rate goes up, uh, interest going up cannot happen together with interest going down, right? They it's just, you know, uh, either interest going up or interest rate going down. So when interest rate goes up, actually, uh, this is a, a good thing for coupon payments. 
right? Because the coupon payments can be reinvested at a higher rate. So the value of all those coupon payments are higher. So whatever is the loss in the uh, price of the bond is offset, right? By the uh, 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 the increased, you know, um, uh, increased, you know, uh, uh, present value uh, from the uh, um, uh, higher reinvested, uh, you know, um, coupon payments, right? Uh, <clears throat> so, um, of course, in this case, the net uh, there's no net gain. Net gain will be zero, of course. <clears throat> because you know you deliberately matched uh, uh, these two things. Now, in that sense, uh, the obligation, you know, your liability, is immunized. Okay, so this applies to the uh, situation where you have a uh, billion-dollar obligation liability. Uh, uh, ma uh, whereas you also have, you know, $1 million assets, right? And uh, in other words, if you have only um, $1 million in bonds out of your own pocket, I mean, that was, you know, um, equity, right? That was, you know, uh, you bought $1 million worth of bonds with equity. And in that case, you know, uh, you, you don't have any obligation because you have, it didn't come from the liabilities. <clears throat> but if you financed uh, your, if you financed your bond purchase, $1 million bond purchase with liability, you know, uh, uh, and then <clears throat> you will have an obligation to uh, uh, pay back the promised liability to your debt holders, <clears throat> to your bond holders or debt holders. <clears throat> and over time, you know, I mean, initially it was, you know, $1 million. And let's say uh, when you financed it, it couldn't have been free. I mean, you didn't borrow, you couldn't borrow $1 million at, you know, a zero cost. You, you know, the interest rate is, let's say, uh, you borrow that money uh, with a promise to pay 10%, you know, compounded, you know, uh, for 10 years or something like that. But, you know, over the course of 10 years, interest rate may fluctuate unexpectedly. And then, you know, uh, uh, think about it, 1 million at 10% 10 years later, uh, what's it going to be? You know, it's 1 million times 1.1 1 .1 raised to 10. And you owe that future value to your investors, uh, to your, you know, uh, debt holders <coughs> or creditors. And 10 years later, uh, that money, right, that 1 million principal that you borrowed, uh, and you must have, you know, put it into some investment uh, up, uh, investment instruments. And what if that investment, future value of that invest, investment instrument uh, uh, is less than your uh, liability? You're in trouble, right? You're in trouble. And that's possible because of, you know, in, interest rate fluctuation. <clears throat> So, um, by immunizing, right, your, you know, um, by immunizing your portfolio, uh, uh, you can offset this, you know, uh, uh, discrepancy between, possible discrepancy between uh, your assets and liabilities, right? So let's take a look at, you know, uh, uh, table 11.4, and let's, that's 11.4, actually. <clears throat> We're going to uh, get to that. So um, uh, GIC immunized by bond with, you know, five-year duration. Now, what is GIC? It's a guaranteed investment contract. So usually, you know, um, uh, so as a single individual, as an individual investor, this, you don't, this doesn't happen to you. But if you are an institutional investor, such as insurance company, right, this happens a lot uh, 
Also, if you're already a fund manager, this happens a lot, portfolio manager. Why? Because, you know, uh, insurance companies usually, you know, uh, sell guaranteed investment contracts, right, uh, GIC, uh, for $10,000 with, you know, uh, uh, five-year maturity at 8% uh, <clears throat> uh, interest rate. Uh, and coupon rate at this, uh, yeah, this is not bonds, so not coupon rate, but interest rate. So in other words, uh, what you are, you know, you raise the 10K from an investor, right? And then you uh, guarantee that the investor will get, you know, uh, 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 whatever the future value of, you know, uh, at uh, uh, 10K five years later, right? At 8% interest, right? In other words, that would be a, uh, 14,693, if you quickly know the calculation. That's, that's exactly what an insurance is, you know, uh, um, <clears throat> insurance product. Of course, you know, uh, there are, uh, this is not the kind of insurance product, you know, uh, that doesn't accumulate, right? I mean, a car insurance, they, they never accumulate. There's no cash value. In other words, you know, you cannot use it, right? Uh, uh, you know, health insurance, you pay premiums, they never accumulate. You just, you know, it's pay as you go or, you know, not pay as you go. You just pay into that, never, you know, be able to, uh, 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 you know, uh, take out the uh, cash out, the uh, full future value. It's just, you know, uh, uh, an insurance, just in case something happens. But, this type of guaranteed insurance, uh, you know, contract, in, uh, investment contract, is like a um, CD in a way, if you think about it. Because you have a CD contract, uh, two years, and you put ten thousand dollars. They guarantee, like you know, two uh, percent. Uh, these days, you know, it's like that. But you know, years ago, it was like six percent. You know? uh, these days, you know, not even two percent, right? Uh, probably one percent. Um, so it's like a CD, right? But, you know, uh, sold by insurance companies, right? Um, so then, you know, this is an obligation or liability. I mean, you have an insurance company or portfolio manager has an obligation uh, to pay back this in five years. And with the fund that they raised uh, to make this possible, then they will have to invest something, right? So what they did was they uh, invested that 10,000 uh, in a bond that pays, you know, 8% coupon annually and currently selling at par value. That means the market interest rate yield is, you know, um, also 8%, uh, but with a maturity of uh, six years. You might wonder why six years? Uh, should it, can it be? Should it be just five years? No. Uh, if, if it is five years, then you know, you you'll be in trouble. Now, now this one is your asset. I mean, that's basically you know <clears throat> what the uh, uh, Wall Street does. You know what you know basically a financial industry does. They take you know uh, deposit from the investors, from the uh, clients, and they invest it. And in the process, they will uh, try to make um, they they you know uh, uh, in the stock there's no guarantee, but at least in bond or in you know uh, guaranteed investment product CDs you know uh, they promise you know like three uh, percent interest uh, <clears throat> for five years, uh, but you know they invested in something that you know uh, gives you know four percent five percent return so they make something out of this you know that's what that's the whole you know um uh existential reason right for uh, their being <clears throat> anyway uh so uh the idea is like this uh in the uh, gic at maturity 
four coupons have been reinvested at 8%, right? So future value of all those, you know, uh, coupons are 4,693. So that's why it is, you know, uh, right? That's why it is, you know, uh, that's why it is, you know, what, uh, 14,000, right? And, and the uh, coupon rate is, uh, you know, same as the uh, yield, uh, the market interest rate, 8%, with maturity value and uh, cash flow at time six, in year six, and with one year left to time six, uh, now, now uh, think about it. <clears throat> in in uh, at the end of uh, year five, right? The bond is still one year left. The bond has still one year left, right? And the bond has, you know, um, uh, four four coupons reinvested, right? So uh, the bond has the uh, cash flow of, you know, uh, from coupon of this. And um, when um, assuming that the coupon rate is still the same thing as uh, Right? Assuming that the coupon rate is still the same thing as uh, the market interest rate, right? Then you know, uh, price of the bond will be a par value bond if you sell it at the end of <coughs> year five, because you know it's with one year left to uh, uh, maturity of one year left to a uh, maturity of year six, right? So this is the um, <coughs> Uh, from the bond, you know, uh, asset side, on the asset side, right? Um, so think about it. On liability side, at the end of year five, the future value of the liability, right? Uh, at the end of year five, right? Uh, so we'll have to, uh, you know... Uh, You have GIC, which is liability, right? And a uh, bond, which is asset, right? And at and at time uh, when t is five, right? Right. When time is year five, right? At the end of year five, right? <clears throat> the uh, the the value of the uh, GIC will be the obligation will be. Uh, 14,693. And at that point, uh, the value of your bond will be also 14,698, uh, 693, because the uh, future value of all the uh, reinvested cash flows will be 4,000, right? Four coupons reinvested at 8%. Future value of coupons, 4,693, <clears throat> right? And then, you know, uh, with one year left, right, uh, uh, you can sell the bond uh, 
uh, at par value because uh, with one year left maturity, uh, because you know uh, uh, the coupon rate is the same as you know uh, discount rate. You, <clears throat> in other words, you know ten thousand eight hundred uh, will be discounted, right? Exactly by 1.08, right? We just discounted one period, and it becomes uh, uh, and it becomes right uh, ten thousand dollars, right? So uh, your uh, liability and assets are exactly matched. Your obligation and your assets are exactly matched, and here. The point is, you put, you bought the bond, uh, you know, um, with you know six years to you know uh, uh, maturity. I mean, it doesn't have to be six years to maturity exactly, but the point is, uh, uh, even if it is not, even if the maturity is not six years. I mean, if, if this, these conditions are met, the bond at the end of year five will sell, if you sell it, uh, you know, uh, before maturity, prior to maturity, if you sell it, uh, it will be exactly, it will sell for $10,000. That way, and with the, uh, you know, um, uh, and with the, the coupons, you know, all reinvested, uh, the value of coupons it exactly matches the obligation and here this is the thing that means you know um, uh, the <clears throat> this bond uh, which is a coupon bond although its maturity is six years its duration is five years duration is five years make sense and the uh, GIC is actually like a zero coupon bond now, you might wonder you might say uh -huh. how can how can it be zero coupon bond i mean wasn't it paying eight percent um uh interest yes it's paying eight percent interest but uh, look at uh, look at it this way you're not getting any coupon uh it's like you know um uh, so, uh, the maturity value of this uh bond the gic is not 1000 but 14698 and you bought it at a discount right at a discounted uh price of 10000 make sense so without paying any uh, interest during you know five year period from the discounted <clears throat> price of 10000 it grew to the maturity value of 14006 something 693 so this is like exactly like the uh, concept of uh, zero coupon bond. Make sense? And remember, uh, the duration and the uh, uh, maturity of the zero coupon bond are the same thing, one and the same. There's no difference between you know uh, uh, maturity and the duration in a zero coupon bond, right? Oh, that's an interesting thing, isn't that right? Uh, so if you think, you know, uh, oh, how can it be zero coupon? I mean, it's not like, you know, uh, $1,000 par value. Don't worry about that. For th in this case, this, you know, 14693 is the par value, right? This is the par value, right? So... <clears throat> Uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, reasoning behind it. If the interest rate stays at eight percent, obligation is fully funded, right? As the uh, present value. Oh no. Uh, um, yeah, it's the same thing. As the present value of GIC is the same. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, when when you bought it, right? Uh, but it's like you know uh, future value. I'm sorry. You know, it's one way to uh, say that. But you know, uh, uh, it's irrelevant. You know, um, 
when time has, you know, so this thing is a bit misstated. I mean, when you bought it, you know, uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> present value, that's 10K, 10K. Um, And I should also say, uh, okay, future value of the GIC is the same thing, uh, same as future value of the bond. <clears throat> and if, uh, but uh, however, if uh, interest rate is no longer 8%. Now the obligation is still funded. Uh, why? Uh, as future value of the uh, GIC is you know, roughly equivalent, roughly equal to future value of cash flows from the bond. Okay. Why? How come? Let's take a look. So here's the thing. Oh, it looks quite complicated because I've added so many uh, notes there. <clears throat> but, you know, I guess uh, uh, you can, you know, we can still see. Uh, or maybe I can blow this up a little. Uh, okay. Here we go. So uh, if the interest rate remains 8%, 8% still, right? The calculation goes, you know, we don't have to do this. You know, we know it's going to be, it's going to add up exactly to 14,693. Uh, but if it falls to 7%, if it falls to 7%, then it will be uh, 14,694. It's even better than this. And why? Well, because, you know, uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, discount uh, the 10,000, uh, the, uh, the terminal value, terminal payment of 10,800 is discounted less. Although all the uh, uh, coupon, future value of coupons are smaller, but uh, uh, the, the, the terminal uh, cash flow is discounted less, so they offset, right? Reinvestment risk offsets the uh, uh, price risk or interest rate risk, right? And then even if uh, rate increases to uh, 9%, then uh, uh, reinvestment, uh, cash flow reinvested will end up, you know, uh, greater value, right? Greater future value, whereas, you know, uh, the terminal uh, payment, terminal cash flow, uh, is discounted more. So what you lose here, what you lose here is more than offset by what you gain here. And in this case, what you lose here is more than offset by what you gain here, right? Make sense? I think I better make it. Yeah. Okay. This one I probably want to do a little better job. Uh, Hence, the portfolio is uh, immunized, right? Or your obligation is immunized, okay? But the thing, interesting thing is, you know, once again, we can we cannot rely on this uh, for a large change in uh, interest rate. I mean, uh, in this example, interest rate changed only incrementally by one percent. 
However, you know, in in uh, in the financial market, right, uh, interest rate doesn't change in a uh, by large magnitude, right? Uh, I mean, in two thousand eight, it happened actually, but uh, during the financial crisis, right, the interest rate fell like four percent a year over just one year period. You know, interest rate fell four uh, percent which was a huge change, right? And uh, if that is the case, um, uh, there will be a significant, right? Um, by huge, uh, if that's the case, the short-term, short-term uh, short portfolio will benefit. Short-term portfolio will, bond portfolio will benefit because, uh, a huge 4% drop in interest rate will uh, raise the uh, uh, the present value of the terminal payment, right? But uh, the future value of all the uh, uh, coupons will be uh, discounted deeply, right? So for short term, the uh, uh, the, the the gain in the uh, term, uh, terminal payment will uh, prevail the loss uh, in the uh, uh, coupons, right? Loss in the present value uh, of coupons um, uh, because, you know, there aren't that many coupons, right? But if it is a long-term bond, this would be a different story, right? And in 2000, um, that's what happened in 2008, actually. Um, so, um, let's go over, uh, it's basically the same explanation. I just wanted to, uh, make a, you know, uh, uh, very, you know, a clear notation here. If interest rate goes up, fund will suffer capital loss, future value of bonds, uh, drop in five years. Then if, uh, rate had remained at 8%, right? However, uh, at higher interest rate, uh, price rate, higher interest rate, uh, uh, reinvested coupons grow at faster rate, right? And then it will lead to, uh, it will offset the uh, capital loss. In other words, i.e., right, uh, uh, increase in um, rate. Uh, will lead to a capital loss, but simultaneously increase in reinvested, uh, a reinvest, reinvestment rate uh, will go up. Uh, so with appropriate portfolio uh, duration, price risk will cancel out reinvestment risk, reinvestment rate risk, it's actually reinvestment rate risk. Exactly. But portfolio uh, duration set equal to investors' uh, maturity, time horizon. Uh, future value of investment fund at T is unaffected by uh, the change in uh, interest rate. For maturity uh, equal to portfolio's duration, price risk precisely offsets the reinvestment risk, and the obligation is immunized. You know, it's the same thing. You know, I just wanted to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, make a very, you know, uh, clear statement, right? Okay, th so that's the idea behind the immun uh, immunization, right? Uh, and, uh, uh, well, we're out of time, so we'll have to uh, look, uh, look into this in our next video, okay? So, um, uh, that's it. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, I'll see you guys in the uh, next video. Uh, stop recording.